All right, EDU305, here is your quick introduction to assistive technology. Um, assistive technology, just before we get started, is a really good example of what we've been talking about all semester. The technology should fit seamlessly into the instruction. It shouldn't be the topic that we're teaching, but it should really help with the actual curriculum. So that being said, here is an official definition uh, for an assistive technology device. Now this is kind of important to understand, talking about assistive technology devices, pieces of equipment, product systems, doesn't matter where you get them from, and then really important, I've highlighted it in three letters, excuse me, three words there. It's used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capability of a child with a disability. And this comes from the U.S. Individuals with Disabilities Act, IDEA, of 2004. Uh, but the key words we really want to focus on in this presentation is how does this device or devices increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities? Now, a lot of times we don't think about those devices in terms of really simple devices. Like this device here got the has no power source doesn't plug into anything, but it's a great example of an assistive technology device. Christian. Christian. Open your eyes, buddy. Hi. Hi. Love those eyes. Hi. Hi, Munchkin. <laughs> so there we have an assistive technology device with no power source, but definitely is improving the life of that child and increasing his functional abilities. Um, however, some assistive technology can be really technical. Uh, this is a cochlear implant. It's a, a hearing aid, basically, that's connected right into the bone. This is a surgical implant into the bone of the person wearing it. And then the receiver transmits a signal down to the cochlear area of the ear where they're able to hear. Now, here's a gal who hasn't heard. <laughs> It's like she so speaks cool. amazingly well for someone who's <laughs> deaf, but they're turning on her cochlear implant for the very first time. So if you can imagine the technology that it takes right for her to be able yeah. to hear. There you go. It's beeping. So now technically your device is on. <laughs> can you tell? Oh, that's exciting. Here, you can put it down for a second. Just get used to the sound. <laughs> what does it sound like? This is an experience often felt by people with cochlear implants. The very first time that they hear is quite oh, overwhelming for them. Don't cry. <laughs> so definitely an increase in her functional capabilities. Now, um, I've got to say that I just had to throw this in here because here is uh, a little piece, bit of assistive, uh, an assistive technology device, a ramp. At the common playground, but um, a ramp in real life can also be assistive technology, even if you are on the uh, I'm Aaron Wheels' father Red Bull. and my world's first is a wheelchair front flip. On our second tour, I had been, you know, doing backflips for, you know, a while, and I was just kind of getting burned out on them, and honestly, they're, they're pretty hard to land. I kind of want to try a flip. So if you want to go watch the rest of this video, about... it's pretty fun to see the very first uh, front flip ever done on a wheelchair. But something as simple as a ramp can be considered uh, assistive technology. Um, assistive technology, this, this one just amazes me always because this is quite a complex system of multiple assistive technology devices. So we're going to watch um, a quadriplegic, someone who has no movement, below their shoulder area. They get an implant in their tongue of a little uh, metal stud that's implanted in their tongue. Now on the sides of the face here, these are magnetic sensors. They're sensing the position of that metal stud in the mouth. That signal is being sent to a control unit right there on the top of the head. The control unit can send this to lots of different devices. 
So the person with this unit on can control a PC, a laptop. They could control their television, um, or they can control their powered wheelchair, which is quite amazing. A new device invented it. by Georgia Institute of Technology researchers could make life easier for the wheelchair bound. The scientists have developed a system that allows paralyzed people to control their wheelchairs using their tongues. Users would pierce their tongues to accommodate a metal stud attached to a strong magnet. Sensors on a headset detect the position of the piercing by sensing its magnetic field. The headset sends signals to a smartphone carried by the user. The smartphone will then control the movements of the wheelchair. The new technology also enables users to do things such as make calls or operate a computer. Subjects with tech. So I'm going to mute that, and now that you've seen that, what would you say? Does that increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities? That's the three purposes of assistive technology, increase, maintain, or improve. But just an amazing device. All right, so assistive technology. Um, here's a really interesting use of assistive technology that's not necessarily a device but a piece of software to read and seeing the letters scramble before your eyes. That's a reality for anyone who struggles with dyslexia, the most common language-based learning disability. Well, the Gauss School is known around the world for helping these students succeed. The Now's Brittany Muller looks at how new technology is helping them do it. Once again, look for play increasing, maintaining, Just the way that we read, our brains don't process it the same as people that don't have dyslexia. And when I do read very frequently, I find myself uh, not really understanding the actual materials. Victoria, who comes from London, Ontario, and Nathaniel, who's from Baltimore, Maryland, are students at the Gow School in South Wales. They're here because they have dyslexia, and the Gow School specializes in helping students like Victoria and Nate, who are living with language-based learning differences. Ever since elementary school, actually, I've struggled for a long time, and just going into high school, I thought it would get easier but it didn't. Until coming to the Gao School two years ago, the class sizes are no larger than seven students. All 145 students at the school get laptops with assistive technology called Kurzweil and Dragon Naturally Speaking. It highlights each word as it goes. The program also allows them to highlight to define words, to look up a picture of a certain concept that they might struggle to understand. Science teacher Jason Rothfuss and Jeff Pablocki, the director of technology, say technology is crucial in the way these students learn. Technology, it's really a complement of what the teachers do in their classroom. Just having things read to you, it's something in your brain, like it helps you comprehend it easier. It's not a tool that replaces learning, it's a tool that augments learning. It not only helps them in their academics, but it also gives them the confidence in other aspects of their lives. It takes students where they're, they're learning in a moment of pain and, and learning is not fun, and it really transforms them into a student that really likes to learn. Being able to... So then we're talking about, once again, increasing, maintaining, and improving functional capabilities of the students, in this case through software. Uh, but just FYI, that program that was mentioned, that um, Dragon Naturally Speaking, we actually have that available for students here on campus through the um, Counseling and Disability Center. Uh, they will set up students on that if needed. So interesting piece there. Now, let's get into the purposes of instructional assistive technology. We're looking at independence. We're looking at improving tasks, increasing functionality. Um, there's all sorts of great videos. If you want to learn more about assistive technology, you can go look at this one. Uh, the slides are on Canvas. You can go and click and watch that video. Uh, but it all kind of started with the Assistive Technology Act back in 1998. And that's the act that really affirmed that in the U.S., that technology is a tool that can improve people with disabilities and that all states should be responsive. They should have programs that are available. And that if a student who has a disability, um, they deserve or they, they have the legal right to have an IEP, an Individual Educational Plan, that will define how assistive technology will be used in the school to help increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of that child's disability. Now specifically it's section 508 that deals with this, and this is just a lot of blah 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 blah, but
but it's good to, to know and have this information if you ever need to go and look it up officially. It started in 73, updated in 98, updated again in 2004, if I remember right. But it, it basically means that these things should be available. Now, every state has an assistive technology center, an ATRC, Assistive Technology Resource Center. And this is the information for the Assistive Technology Resource Center here in Hawaii. And this is available to any person, any student, or any parent of any student with a disability, whether that disability is a physical disability or a learning disability, any disability um, this center can provide resources for. And they're, they're, by providing resources, they may refer to where the resources are available, or they may be able to help obtain resources for people and students in that situation. Oh, I should have put the website. It's already there anyway. Um, so just want to run through some really quick examples of assistive technology as you think about you know what this actually means, especially for your final project. You have to make sure that you are planning uh, appropriate assistive technology for a student who um, has a physical handicap, is missing one arm. So you need to plan for that. And then you also need to plan for a student who has low vision. Those details are in that grant project proposal. But think about what could you use to help those students either increase, maintain, or improve their ability, their functional capabilities for their disabilities. So for people that might have a hard time reading, you could do everything from highlighter tape. You know, this is just a highlighter. It's in a tape form, though. You just put it down just like you would highlight different things. Uh, this is a scanner that will scan and then automatically read the text. This is what my uncle would use. He was visually impaired, and he can put his his newspaper or anything underneath there, and that just blows it up, a giant uh, screen, uh, kind of a giant screen camera. So interesting things. Uh, pencil grips. You never think about pencil grips. But what if you have students who aren't able to physically grip a pencil very well? Um, I don't know why the calculator is there, but look at all of these different pencil grips. This is what I call the Death Star grip. Uh, but pencil grips, I used to have at least seven or eight different types in my elementary classroom because students sometimes wouldn't have the physical ability to grip a pencil easily. So something as simple as pencil grips would be out there. Oh, here's a grip for a ruler. That's assistive technology. Helps the student be able to grab that ruler better. Uh, grips for scissors, especially for someone with only one hand. You know, have you ever tried to cut a piece of paper with one hand? It's really hard. So some uh, options there. Oh, uh, here's a great assistive technology device to help students hear themselves as they read. Maybe overcome some sort of a speech impediment. This is just made with PVC pipe. It's called a whisper reader or whisper tube because students can read with just a low whisper of a voice here and the sound just travels up the pipe and into their ear and you can have lots of students reading at the same time which is a great thing now another thing you may have noticed in this picture is this boy on his finger he has the witch finger the great thing about this witch's finger is the teacher is using this as an assistive technology device to help the student follow along with the words on the book so it's the same as he would use a pointer uh, kind of a cool little assistive technology device that shows up there. Oh, here's some great keyboards. Speaking of students with disabilities, uh, we have right here a Braille keyboard. So this is where they receive um, output from the keyboard. And up here they can enter the input. Uh, this keyboard here, what do you think it's for? Hopefully you saw this little hint there, easy C, students with visual disabilities. And this keyboard here is really unique. And you might have guessed by now that this is a keyboard designed for a one-handed student. Student with only one hand, easy access to all the keys there. Um, here are different versions of mouse or mice. Uh, this one is one that could be controlled with a hand, uh, maybe someone with a physical impairment of an arm hard time moving things. Here's someone with a complete physical disability 
it's actually tracking their eye movement on the screen and then they can press and squeeze the the little air bladder here that is their click for the mouse um, you can kind of see here is that air reader um, oh this is actually that magnet one we saw earlier the the magnet uh, tongue piercing so this actually tracks probably a camera built in somewhere up here tracks the magnetic symbols from the tongue stud and runs the computer but then very simplified mice for younger children maybe with people with physical disabilities don't have the same fine motor skills all sorts of ways of providing assistive technology I mean as simple as organizing cords making it e easier to grasp following text there's those magic witch fingers put those on and kids can follow the text or using a clear ruler even though this doesn't plug into anything these things are assistive technology they increase maintain and improve the functional capabilities of those students here's someone who might not be able to hold things very well so you can make a card holder out of pool toys or out of a brush you could do art projects and instead of using paint brushes that might be hard to hold on to students could hold a sponge they could run a car across it all of these if they're used to increase maintain or improve the functional capability of a student with a disability they are considered assistive technology <laughs> speaking of COVID-19 assistive technology a child might have a hard time reaching the sink because that faucet is just too far forward cutting a bottle a plastic bottle down providing an extension this is actually assistive technology even though we usually think of technology as something that plugs in so assistive technology can be done for all sorts of things and often the assistive technology we use is not anything that plugs in a low-tech assistive technology and no tech assistive technology are just as valuable maybe even more so than high-tech assistive technology devices now all of these slides are out there on canvas so you can go through and take a look a little bit closer if you want um, but you know here's something that you could do on your own right now as in a little example pull out your iPhone your Android phone your smartphone or even get on your computer and see if you can do one of these things you know, can you figure out how to make your text larger whoops <laughs> so if you have a student who needs a larger text could you invert the text for better contrast can you figure out how to change the colors can you figure out how to get your phone to read your email message to you instead of reading it out instead of you reading it have the have the phone read it to you out loud just kind of a little fun thing to try out see if you can figure out some of these assistive technology adaptations in your device that are already built in um, here are two things that you should never use assistive technology for it cannot improve your teaching if your teaching is not good assistive technology is not going to make it any better so remember assistive technology is to increase maintain or improve the functional capabilities of a student with a disability it won't make any learning or attention issues go away but it will help the student once again increase maintain or improve so in your grant proposal you need to make sure that you address these two students in your class whoops sorry a student with low vision and there's the definition of that and a student with a physical impairment does not have a right arm and hand in your grant proposal specifically address how you're going to increase maintain or improve the functional capability of these two students and before I sign off here remember seamless seamless is the key if it sounds like an add-on an afterthought or an event it's not the way to go so there's your quick introduction to assistive technology I hope that helps out there's a lot more resources on the canvas page a lot more videos you can watch to learn more about assistive technology and maybe research more into it <laughs>